Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this grade 11 physics tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add two dimensional vectors using components. So what I have here is I have four different vectors, four different displacement vectors, and we're going to add them all. But before we get started with this, let's look at what components actually are. Let's just take a random vector, like so. And let's just say this is a displacement vector because it's easiest to visualize. And so we're going to have a person over here, starting right here. This is going to be the start. And then they're going to move along this vector all the way over here to the finish line. All right, and that is some displacement. Let's call it A. Now let's go back to the start and say, well, what this person has to do is get to the finish line, but they can only move horizontally or vertically, not diagonally. So in that case, one option would be to first go to the right and then to go straight up. And so we're going to call this A subscript X, since it would be parallel to an X axis on a Cartesian plane, and this A subscript Y again, since it would be parallel to a y-axis on a Cartesian plane. And these are called components or parts of a vector which are horizontal and vertical. Now, of course, these horizontal and vertical parts will be perpendicular to each other, and that's where they're going to become extremely useful. So let's say I wanted to add two vectors in two dimensions. How would this look like? Well, Let's keep this vector A. I'll try to draw something similar there. So that's vector A. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add vector. So let's say this is B. And what I'm doing is I'm adding the tip of one arrow to the tail of the next. When I do that, then if we go from the start to the finish and connect start to finish with an arrow, that arrow is going to be the vector A plus B. All right, so how would I actually find A plus B? Now, this is a triangle, so you could use sine law or cosine law. You obviously can't use your trig ratios because it's not a right angle triangle. But if I were to add more than two vectors, we wouldn't have a nice triangle. So let's just look at this triangle and how we would use components to add vectors A and B. First, let's look at the X component of vector A. It looks like this call this a x and then the x component of vector b let's call it bx all right and something that you might be able to see is that if we were to add ax and bx we would perfectly get the x component of this vector a plus b all right, well, what about, say, y components? Well, this would be here, a y. And this here would be b y. And if I completely add a y plus b y, what I would get would be the y component of that vector a plus b y. So let's say I were to call a plus b some vector c. So now I know that vector is C's. I know its Y component. Let's call that CY. And I know its X component. Let's call it CX. And so now all I have to do is solve a right angle triangle because vector C is equal to the sum of its components. So whenever we're adding vectors, say um, we're adding A plus B in this case, what we can do is say that, well, CX is the sum of the parts, AX plus BX. And CY is the sum of the parts, AY plus BY. All right, so let's put this into action and let's actually solve this example, work it through, so you can see how we're going to do it. It is a little tedious, 
But when you're adding multiple vectors, more than two vectors, and you don't get a nice triangle to use sine and cosine law for, it is your best approach. All right, so the first thing that we've done is we've drawn all of our displacement vectors coming from the origin of a coordinate system, and we're going to use a, a compass direction to help us as well. And let's say these vectors have angles 35 degrees, 10 degrees, and 30 degrees. And what we want to do is find some total displacement, where total displacement is the sum of all of these displacement vectors, delta d1, delta d2, delta d3, and delta d4. So the first step then is to figure out all of our components. So I want to break delta d1, 2, and 3, and 4 into their parts, their x and y, or horizontal and vertical components. So let's start with delta d1. Here would be our horizontal component, and here's our vertical component. Let's call this delta d1x and delta d1y. And I'm going to create a little chart here where I'm going to solve for the x and y components of each vector. So let's start with delta d1. So the x component, this is a right angle triangle. So what I can do is use our trig ratios, if you remember SOKOTOA. And for here, to solve for x, you can see that the x component is adjacent to the angle. So I'm going to want to use the cosine loss. So let's use cos of 35. Going to equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So delta d, 1x over hypotenuse, which is delta d1, which has a value of 12 meters. Multiplying both sides by 12, I'll get delta dx is equal to 12 cos 35. And it has a direction. You can see it's pointing towards the east. And if we put this onto our calculator, we will get it to have a value of 9.8 meters east. All right, well, let's do the same thing for y. Now, y is opposite of our angle, so we're going to use sine. So the sine of 35 is going to equal to delta d 1y all over, again, the hypotenuse, which is 12. Multiply both sides by 12, and we get delta d 1y is going to equal to 12 sine 35 degrees, and the direction is up, pointing north. So that's going to be north. We plug that into our calculators, and we get 6.9 meters north. All right, so we're going to do the same thing for every other vector. So let's go on to delta d2. If we were to draw its horizontal and vertical components, it's going to look like this. So delta d2. Now you can see the x component is adjacent. So again, we're going to use cosine. So we can write delta d2x is going to be, just as before, we will get the hypotenuse, 20, times the cos of the angle, 10 degrees, which gives us 19.7 meters. And this one is directed towards the west. So we want to make sure we note that. All right, so let's solve for delta d2y. And delta d2y is going to be 20 sine 10 degrees. And it is directed north, which gives us a value of 3.5 meters north. All right, doing the same for delta d3, we have a vertical component towards the south and a horizontal comp component towards the west. Now notice this time that our vertical component is adjacent to the angle. If it's adjacent to the angle, we're going to be using cosine to solve for that vertical component. And it's not always going to be cosine for our x direction. 
It all depends on where that angle is. If the angle a given is from your x-axis, then the x component will be cos. If it's to the y-axis, then your y component will be cos. So that means our x component is going to be sine. So we're going to have 5 times the sine of 30. Sine of 30 is just a half, so that's 2.5 meters. And it's pointed towards the west, so that's west. And we can do the same thing for our y component, which is directed south. We're going to get 5 cos 30 degrees, which is 4.3 meters south. All right, now our last vector is perfectly along our y-axis. It's perfectly vertical, so it has no horizontal component. So for delta d4, we say delta d4x is equal to 0. And delta d4y, we don't have to calculate because that's given as 15 meters, and the direction is south. All right, so our next step is to find that total displacement. And we can't find the total yet, but what I can do is add all of our x components to find what that total displacement is in x, and I can add all of our y components to find out what that total displacement is in y. But you do want to be careful with the directions because this is east, west, west. So you don't, you don't want to just add those numbers. What we can do is change this first one to be negative 9.8 meters west. So now all the directions are west. And if we add them, we will get a total of 12.4 meters west. We're going to do the same thing in our y. So notice we have north, north, south, south. So what I'm going to do, and it doesn't matter which one you do it with, but it looks like south has greater value. So I'm going to change this to minus 6.9 meters south. And this one I'm going to change to minus 3.5 meters south. And multiplying by a negative takes the opposite direction. Then if I add all of our souths, we get a total displacement in y of 8.9 meters south. All right, so now that I know the parts of that total vector, I can draw it out and add them because our total displacement will be equal to the sum of its parts, both its horizontal and its vertical components. So if I draw these and connect them tip to tail, as if I'm adding any other two vectors, what's going to happen is, so here's x, which is 12.4 meters west, plus connect tip to tail 8.9 meters south. And therefore our total displacement is going to be the hypotenuse of a simple right angle triangle. Now, since this is a vector, I need to solve for its length and its direction. So I can solve for its magnitude by using the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be the square root of 12.4 squared plus 8.9 squared, which gives us a value of 15.3 meters. Now, we're also going to need that direction. So since we know opposite and adjacent, let's use that tangent. So the tan of theta is going to equal to opposite, so 8.9, divided by adjacent, 12.4. Take the inverse tan of both sides. Make sure your calculator is on degrees and not radians. And we will get an angle of 36 degrees. Therefore, our displacement... Our total displacement when we add all four of those vectors is 15.3 meters west, 36 degrees south.